Greetings! In this video we're going to continue our discussion of lists in Python. In the previous video I showed you how to create a list that was empty, and then I showed you how you could use the append function in order to add values to it. I also showed you how you could use loops in order to examine each of the values in the list. So for this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at lists in a little bit more detail. I'm going to show you two big advantages of lists that once you learn about them you will understand why lists are such a powerful tool in Python. More importantly, I'm going to show you how you can simplify many of the programs you've been writing with just a single line of code. So let's get to it. The first major advantage of lists is that there are a lot of functions that can use lists and do calculations on our behalf. So here, for example, is a list that I created. Nothing fancy, it's just a list with seven numbers in it. And let's say a common thing we want to do in this class is uh, find the biggest number right in a list of numbers in the old days the way that you would have to do this is you'd have to create some sort of variable and you'd have to set it to you know something really small then you'd have to look at each value in my list and then you'd have to compare it is greater than max value then we could replace max value with value right there's a lot of steps here there's a lot of room for error so instead of doing all of this Let's use a function. So if I want to find the biggest number, I will just, and we'll, let's just print it out. I'll use the max function. I will give it my list as a parameter. And when I press play, it prints out the biggest number in that list. Yep. So all that code you wrote before can now be done with a function. We can also find the smallest number. Not surprisingly, right? All you have to do is the min function and you pass it the list and it now will print off the smallest number in that list. Another common thing we have you do in this class is calculate the average, right? And so in order to do that, I need to add up all these values and then I need it to d divide it by the number of values in this list. So that's pretty easy too. So if I want to calculate the total, what I can do is just print out the sum of my list and this will work as long as the list only contains numbers. So 28. And then if I want to calculate the number of values in the list, uh, I just say the length function. And we already saw this one right, in a previous video. So if I do that, it'll tell me that there are seven values in my, my list. That's not all we can do. We can also sort. Uh, so sometimes uh, you want to solve problems where maybe you have a bunch of names and you want to put them in alphabetical order or you have a bunch of test scores and you want to figure out who got, you know, how many people are in the top quarter, quartile or whatever. Um, in order to do that, what you can do is you type the name of the list and you type sort. No parameters in the function. Um, and if you do this and you print it, it will sort it in ascending order. If you need it in descending order, you can add a parameter. So here you can say reverse equals true. And when I press play, it actually goes in reverse order. So that's actually a really simple way to sort lists. And it's a really powerful tool. So like I said, all of this is on your quick reference sheet. Uh, life is really good when you use these functions. And uh, I think after you've seen them, it's a lot easier actually to put the values in a list and use the functions than it oftentimes is to write that loop that we showed you how to do. It's still important that you understand how that loop works because that's all these functions are doing but you have the functions, you can use them. The second advantage of lists is a little bit more subtle. In order to understand it, uh, let's go back to a problem that we've asked you to solve many times. So remember when we asked you to calculate like the average of a bunch of numbers? So you would have code that looks something like this. You would get the number of values from the user, you'd set some sort of total, you'd have a loop where you looped that many times, you got a value, you added it to your total. That's all well and good. Uh, when you're done with the loop, you can calculate your average just by taking your total and dividing it by the number of values. But it's important to remember what you've lost in the process. You remember, for example, that the total is 28, but you don't remember what combination of numbers it was that led you to get to 28. So at the end of your loop, you only have the total. You don't remember what all the values, individual values are. And that sounds like a small thing, and it was back then, but it actually limits the types of problems you can solve. So let's look at this problem. Given these numbers, can we determine how many are above the average? You can't do this right now with your, without using a list because it requires you to look at your data twice. 
first you have to look at all the numbers so that you can calculate the total. But once you have the average, then you have to go back and look at all those numbers again in order to figure out which ones are actually above it. And that's something that lists give us. That's our second advantage. Lists let us examine a set of data more than once. To help drive that point home, here's a practice problem we have where it's just uh, analyzing a set of swim results. So we're going to ask the user for the number of swimmers, we're going to get the swim time, we're going to calculate the average, and then we're going to say how many of those swim times are slower than the average. At a high level, what we're doing is we're getting values from the user, we're going to store that in a list, we're going to calculate the total and average using the functions we talked about a few minutes ago. And then we're going to look back at all the values in our list and we're going to figure out which ones are larger than the average. A larger means slower, right? And then finally we'll print out our results. So the first step is just getting the values. So it's pretty easy to do that. All we're going to do, we'll start off, we'll say uh, determine how many values the user is going to type. So the number of swimmers should be equal to, and it's going to be an integer because you can't have fractions of a swimmer. And then we're going to get all of the times and store them in a list. All right. Um, this is actually our first loop, right? So we'll say for i in range num swimmers. So now we are looping that many times. We're going to get a swim time from the, the user, and we're going to assume that a swim time is a floating point number. And then we have to store it in a list. So I have to go back up here. I'm going to create an empty list uh, to store all the swim times, and I'm going to call it list of swim times. And remember to make an empty list, I just use the brackets. So now I have my empty list. Every time I get a swim time, I'm going to add it to my list. So list of swim times. We're going to use that append function we talked about in the previous video, and we're going to add our swim time. So if I press play now, and I add five swim times, so 10, 11, 14, 16, and 13, I get a list with those values in it. So I know things are pretty good right now. Like At least this part works. The next step is to actually calculate the total itself. In order to get the total, in order to get to the average, we're going to use the functions that we just talked about. So here we're going to calculate the average. And all the work basically that you did in the previous lessons gets summed into one line. I can say here the sum of list of swim times and it's going to be divided by the length of list of swim times. Right? So now I can just print off the average and we can take a look. Uh, I will just go ahead and do uh, Sorry, 5 swim times, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? And that makes sense. Uh, the, the average should be the middle value. So we're good there. So now that we've actually calculated the average, we have to go back through the list and look at all the swim times in order to figure out which one is slower than the average. So we have to keep track of how many there are. So before we do anything, we'll remember our general strategy. We're going to have something before the loop that keeps track of how many people are slower than the average. And in the loop, we're going to have to have some sort of comparison to look at every time, compare it to the average, and decide if we need to count it or not. So before the loop up here, I can uh, create a counter uh, to keep track of how many are slower than the average. So I'll just call it num slower and we'll start it off at zero and then now we'll start a second loop so our second loop is uh, going to look at all the swim times again to see which ones are slower than the average that's a long comment okay um, so we're gonna I'm gonna make some extra white space here so we have room so now I'm just going to loop through it so for each swim time in my list of swim times, I'm going to compare it to the average. So if you are slower than the average, that means you are bigger. So I'll say if the swim time is greater than the average, if I'm slower than the average, then I'm going to take num slower and I'm going to add one to it. All right, so if I do that, I will go through every time. Uh, I will look at my swim times. I will determine how many are slower. And we can actually 
test that. So for example, if I do again 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you can see here on the right you will see that this is my list of swim times, this is my average, and just by comparing there are only two that are bigger than the average, right? So the num slower is equal to two. So I know that things are working. So we've successfully done this step. And now we are at the last step where all we are doing is outputting the answers. So we have to output the average time and then how many are slower than the average. Easy enough, right? So we're just gonna print the answers. The first thing we're gonna print is the average. And then the next thing we're gonna do is print the num slower. So when I run this program again, I will use the same values. The average is 12, and there are two that are greater that are slower than the average. So we have solved our problem. So notice a couple things about this final answer. You know, we still have you know, a the first part here where we're getting the swimmers, we're getting all the stuff, we're putting it in the list. We're calculating the uh, sum and average. Here, for example, we do it in two lines, but I showed you that you can do it basically in one. And then this is the key for these problems, the ability to have a second loop where we can go back through and look at every single swim time again in order to figure out if it's bigger than the average. And if it is, we will go ahead and add one to our counter. And then finally, we print out the answers. So it's actually not that difficult, but putting all these steps together, breaking the problem apart, that's what's going to make it manageable. If you try to do it all at once, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So breaking it down to these four steps makes it very easy to see what you have to do at each phase. So that's it. That's everything you need to know about lists for right now. <laughs> uh, sorry, there's more coming. Uh, but you now know how to create lists, you know how to put data in them, and using the functions we can analyze that data and we can even re-examine our data if we ever need to. So thanks for watching, keep programming, you got this, and we're here to help if you need it. So bye!